can adequately access the proceedings. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to or view this meeting in progress may do so by following the remote links listed on the posting line. An audio recording of this meeting will be posted on the town's website as soon as we are able, which will probably be tomorrow. Um, I'd like to have, start our regular meeting and tonight we will just have a regular meeting. Um, on January, we will have both a regular meeting and a public hearing. So the first item are the minutes of the November 10th, 2022 meeting. Do I have a motion? So move. Seconded, John Bell. Hugh Morton moved, John Bell seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please uh, respond. Betty, the only thing I got, and I don't know how much of a difference it makes, it does say that we did the Pledge of Allegiance, and I don't think we did last last, last oh. week. That's all. <laughs> I, I, I am paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm so, I'm so used to putting it in that I just put it in. I know. I think he's right, no, though. Take it out. I think he's right. I apologize. You can say I apologize. <laughs> um, so for, could we uh, have a, a vote on this, Tim? Tim? You're muted. Probably. You're muted, Tim. Tim Gillespie, aye. Dale. Dale Weber, aye. Garrett. Abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. Hugh? Hugh Morton, aye. John? John Bell, aye. Betty, aye. That's unanimous with one abstention. Okay, thank you. So the first um, item is a town hall restoration. We went through, and I guess you can put that up, Tim. I'm trying to figure out where I have that. Um, <laughs> did we have that? We had that at our last meeting. Yeah, we all, we sent it out again. But if you don't have it, I think we can, uh, I think uh, Jim is there. Jim, are you there? Jim Hartnett? He's probably muted. Yes, can you hear me? Jim, hi. So Jim, just reason. very briefly oh, tell us the items and um, we we um, will probably send it on. Sure, I Go am. ahead, you're there. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's my computer that's freezing up a bit or if it's others but uh we okay. can hear you you're a little you're a little quiet but we can see you and hear you right. oops i'll try I to just speak lost up you. a bit um so, i'm going to turn off the uh, camera and see if that helps so okay. anyway we're, we're looking for a um a grant to the cpc two hundred and sixty five thousand dollars 115,000 would be used for exterior restoration, painting, repairs of the trim. Uh, we're hoping that that money will carry us a little far further along so that we can do some improvements. Uh, there's some handicap accessibility issues with some railings. Um, there's some mortar that needs to be replaced. I door that would be nice to, to replace as well in the garage, but um, we're still, you know, this is a prevailing wage project. Uh, 115, we're hoping we'll get us through that. Um, but if not, uh, it'll get us started anyway. Uh, the additional 150 would be used for electrical upgrades. We're looking to upgrade the electrical service to the town hall, as well as upgrade some of the electrical um, services within the building. Right now, you know, each, each office has a couple of outlets. We have extension cords uh, running under the deck. They recommended that about the last year and rating electrical service. Um, but but the big part of this is what that that allow us to do is we will be able to use that hundred and fifty thousand dollars of electrical work as a match for our green futures grant. We're applying for a five hundred thousand dollars from grant from green futures. I'm sorry, green community that would allow us to put a new heating system and air conditioning system in the building. Uh, this would be a heat pump type system. is to hang out the windows in summer uh, this thing seems been problematic over the last couple of years we you know we're repairing it on a you know every couple of months we're repairing leaks in the pipes uh, and we've been told by samco 
plumbing that the system itself is outdated and needs to be replaced the whole system so this would eliminate that or at least uh, give us an alternative and what we're looking with this grant is you know it's actually six hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars that we'd be getting through this program it'd be a hundred and Reimburse the town with utility rebate, another ten thousand dollars estimated for uh, from the incentive to, for the installation, and then there would be the five hundred thousand dollar grant from Green Communities. Uh, so overall, if if we get this grant, and it looks like they only award a couple of these a year, but there aren't a lot of communities that have applied for it. And when we met with them early, they really liked it. They, you know, they're, they're really trying to electrify some of these buildings, especially the municipal buildings. Uh, Out of Massachusetts, it worked out very well. Um, and they were excited about this project when we brought it to them. So I'm hoping the, uh, the town and this committee will consider the $265,000. We can use that to leverage up over $900,000 worth of work. Well, I'd like to note that the, um, the page that's up now is incorrect. Maria, that, is, that was the original one. The other funding should be 20000 Four hundred and ninety-nine thousand from the Green Communities Grant, and that makes a total of six hundred and forty-eight thousand that will come from other sources than CPA, and for a total expenditure of nine hundred and thirteen thousand for the rehabilitation and upgrading of the building. Now I have a, 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 a that Hugh Morton has raised his hand. Hugh, thank you. Excuse, Excuse me, one me. second. I have not taken. I have not against this project, but should I assume? I hope that the idea of moving everything into the old high school is now a dead duck. We're going to spend this amount of money rehabbing the uh, existing town hall. It'll be insane to then move everything elsewhere. So. I, I wouldn't say it's a dead duck yet. Um, I will say that Can whatever. I, it? I, <laughs> I would say whatever improvements we make to the town hall will be, you know, an improvement to the building itself. So, you know, Hugh, Hugh, um, um, also, we are going to add to the grant agreement basically uh, with the town that they will um, always um, get permission from the uh, Westport Historical Commission if they met, plan to do changes to the exterior of the building. Um, I remember at the last meeting we discussed all of that and I looked into what other towns were doing about town projects and I looked to see if they did restrictions and the answer was no. Um, but two or three of them did put in to a, an agreement with the town that uh, the external building, any, any would be have to be approved by if it is sold. That doesn't answer what you were asking, but uh, this is. This won't be done for quite a few months. Maybe by then we'll have more decisions. We can always withdraw projects, as you know. Um, but anyway, I'd like to know if there are any other comments. Uh, Maria, you had your I hand I just up. wanted to say that Dale emailed me and said that she keeps getting kicked out. So just so you know. OK. Um, Garrett? Um, I just had a question about the electrical upgrade, and I'm I'm wondering whether you've thought about uh, charging stations in in terms of you know whatever you're upgrading to, because um, that seems like it'd be a long term need. Vehicle vehicle charging stations. So we do have we do have two stations in the back of the building now, and we have two over at the annex. But um, yeah, it's a good point. We'll we'll make sure that. Um, we have the ability to do that or add some additional ones. Hugh. 
I put my hand down. I, I said, what you're going to say. Thank you. Oh, there oh. we go. Yeah. Well, do I have a motion um, on the project? Should we? Um, and the motion will be to send the project to the public hearing in January for, for consideration. I would move in favor of doing so. And I'll second the Hugh Morton's um, moved. Dale Weber seconded. I'm going to take a vote, please, if there's no other discussion. All right, Tim, Dale. Tim Gillespie, aye. Dale Weber, aye. Garrett, Stock, aye. Hugh, Hugh Morton, aye. John. John Bell, aye. Betty Slade, aye. That's unanimous. So we will be seeing you or someone, Jim, uh, on January 12th. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, the next uh, project is the Historic Samford School submission. Tony Vieira is here, I believe, with others, but Tony Vieira, I believe, is going to speak to this. We've already discussed this. Um, there were some outstanding uh, questions that I don't know if they got completely resolved, but we really need to resolve them tonight. Uh, Tony? Yes, thank you, Betty. Uh, the uh, the questions I think centered around the uh, the shingles and the outside. Garrett, you may have some updates as well. I I did reach out to Judd and Tim and Mark from CPC. Uh, were asking at the last meeting. You may remember Garrett about the uh, the shingles, the choice of uh, yellow cedar, which is a historic shingle that they were recommending. Which uh, you know I went along with. That's what we put in our project. Um, but there were some questions, so I don't know. I, I tried to set that up. Bob Raposa was on here, too, so he may have an update. Uh, I don't know if that's resolved or not. I haven't heard, uh, but I have been trying to pursue it and contacted a few people to try to get people together to talk about it. Garrett, um, did you hear anything? Yeah, I, I, um, I didn't hear anything. I mean, I, I, was, I was away for a month, but I don't think uh, I don't think there was anything in the minutes about it having been discussed. Yeah, so, I checked the agenda um, and didn't see it. Um, so basically what we were saying here is that why don't you use the uh, the painted shingles? I believe Tim, you were, uh, Tim Gossie, you were saying that they're much cheaper and more available. Um, and they they are historic. Well, they're, they're weathered shingles. They have a weathering stain on them they're not actually a painted shingle sorry yes weathered do you still do you, you what is your feeling about that do you think cpc should require that or do we go with the, what was originally proposed and approved by the by some members of the historical commission not all of them obviously in my view i think that one of these uh, shingles with a weathering stain on it sustains the look uh, that is appropriate for a shingled New England building. Um, and it holds up longer than a standard white cedar extra shingle that, you know, will last for 20, 25 years probably. The, weather, the stained ones will last a little bit longer and they'll have a more consistent color. One argument for the natural shingles is that they weather in a distinctive way in different parts of it so there's more variety but i think these weathering stain shingles are are pretty good and they're pretty readily available they're more available than the unstained stuff and the price they're a little more expensive than a white cedar extra shingle <clears throat> um but i bet they're probably close to what the yellow cedar is i don't know i don't know what the yellow cedar costs <clears throat> Does Garrett, do you say anything yeah. or do you have an opinion? My recollection is is that the Historical Commission did not have a, a strong view on this. I mean, we might have suggested um, looking at these other options, but but um, uh, I think if you know if 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 you have a product that is going to be cheaper in the long run and 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 looks you know looks attractive, looks authentic, uh, I think we'd be okay with that. Betty, for what it's worth, we do have estimates based on um, 
the shingles, uh, the labor associated with the wooden shingles installed, uh, stripping the others off and replacing some wood. And that's a $70,818 uh, figure. So if we did something other than that, that would reduce some of that price uh, it, because uh, all our estimates were a little less than that. Um, but again, we're, we're projecting that out. We, we've got allowances for shingles and we've the allowance right now is the, the shingle taking off, put the new ones on, 70 would labor and material. So Tim, that I think you probably saw that at the last meeting. So if anything, we, hopefully we'd be able to reduce that cost if we switch from another to another shingle. The argument that the uh, Historical Commission had made before is they felt this le uh, yellow um, was more historic and would actually outlast the other shingles, I mean, even the yes. stained shingles. And they felt that you would save it in labor costs in the long run. But again, that was uh, Bill and, and Judd's opinion. Judd's aware of this and aware that we've been trying to get to him because I know I followed up with Bob Raposa who was handling the um, the minutes and the correspondence and Bob said that Judd did receive the material again, knowing the concern for CPC and, and the interest in talking about it. So I, I'm assuming he's just out of town or something that hasn't been able to connect. Hugh? Uh, Tony's really saying what I was about to say, and that is, I always think in a construction project that labor is the most expensive part. So we higher grade materials that save you uh, doing it over again in the near future is worth the expense. But in this case, it seems everybody's saying the same thing. The availability may come into play because you need to get it done, you need to get shingles to some variety. So I would tend to go with Tim's recommendations, but not very strongly because we're all saying the same thing. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to suggest? Um, have you an opinion? Yes. Well, anyway, that's, that's, let's leave that for just a moment. And the other was the design of the uh, handicap. I think we decided to go with Tim's design. Is that what... You yes. Thought, yes, and I, and I also conveyed that to the uh, historical commission as well, and uh, they they were wanted to see the final design. We sent them that. Uh, actually, was the four page document that Tim had prepared some time ago. So they see that in some detail. But I think uh, I think it was Mark that actually mentioned CPC that um, he'd like to uh, kind of view if there was some way that we could maybe alternate alt. Uh, make some alterations in that a little bit and we mentioned that the windows might be a, a problem there so we're still open to show folks that but again we have a uh, you know a figure in there based on the construction as Tim has outlined yeah so your fig your figure is 180,000 for everything that you for have everything. proposed and yes. we understood that to be uh, the amount um, so I guess I have a quick comment Eddie? Sure, Tim. Um, the uh, the railing as it's designed in the drawings that I did would need to be modified to comply with code. Right. right. So there would have to be a more elaborate railing, either a ballasted railing or cable railing or something so that the spaces are no bigger than four inches for any part of it that's more than 30 inches above grade. So that would have to be sort of delineated for a final estimate on what it would cost. How about this? Let's um, get that design. Okay, if that if that is the change. And then uh, to look at the availability of shingles. Uh, Tony, you aren't going to do work until next spring. Is that right? Well, we, we want to do work until it was approved in May. But, but in, in terms of the uh, actual design and shingles and so forth, we were prepared to actually put in the order maybe, you know, in March, if the CPC and the town seem to be interested in pursuing this. Um, so maybe we could place the order because it looks like it's going to be at least a couple of months before we could expect delivery. And then we'll probably have to wait a couple more months before they're actually delivered the way things are going. Yeah, now. yeah. yeah that's a little risky, as you well know, but um, you can always cancel the order. Yep. I <laughs> could redo the drawings and put a railing in that would comply at least one version of a railing that would comply. You know, Tim, the uh, the estimate that we have for the uh, the deck and the landing uh, is $44,000, 44620 for reference. 
And the person who did that for us was uh, uh, Paul Hebert, mm -hmm. so using your drawings. So uh, we could Sorry. kind of coordinate that as well. I think we're, you know, I think we're going to be okay with funds. We're, we're obviously a bit more conservative uh, because, uh, you know, mo you had uh, mentioned earlier uh, in terms of uh, the direction the town's going to go with the building, but we think these upgrades, regardless of if the town has other uses for the building down the road, uh, this would preserve the outside of it and uh, add value to it, uh, whether the town continues ownership or they go in another direction. So uh, the, the funds that we have, a minimum, that we're trying to get the uh, renovations for ADA compliance so people physically can get in, out of the building and the appearance on the outside would sustain it um, as well with the shingles and the, the woodwork as well. There's, there's, there's got to be some upgrades. Some stuff is, you know, rotted out and, and needs repair and the trim will be painted as well. Well, the uh, handicapped access rehabilitation is important to the CPA. Yep. So um, I would I would like a, a motion to um, move this uh, this project one hundred eighty thousand dollars to the public hearing in January, uh, with the pro proviso that um, we will be adjusting the, uh, the the railing and making a decision depending on the various situations uh on the the type of shingles um because we can go until may well you want to do it earlier but we, we can do that pretty soon it will give us a little bit more time you now know it will go to the public hearing if that is somebody's willing to move that i would move that. that john you will make the motion to move the project to the public hearing. John Bell, second, was... I'll second. Was Dale Weber? Okay, and uh, Tim? Uh, Tim Gillespie says aye. Dale? Dale Weber, aye. Garrett? Garrett Stock, aye. Hugh? Hugh Morton, aye. John? John Bell, aye. Betty Slade, I thank you very much. Thank you, Tony, please. and your friends who are there somewhere but under the six others. <laughs> yes, uh, Tom, Tom Flynn and Ed O'Hara from American Legion are also. Thank you very here. much, Tom and Ed. Yeah, thank you for having us. Bye. Bye now. Okay, the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, I believe this is a, we haven't talked about this. Um, I don't think you've been here, Bob, have you, to talk with us no, about this yet. project? Okay, this is a project, um, they're asking $60,000 for uh, the housing office. And Bob, could you explain who you are? Because you haven't been in front of us. And um, what it is that the Affordable Housing Trust wants to do. Sure, good evening, I'm Bob Barboza, the Interim Housing Specialist uh, working for the Westport Affordable Housing Trust. Um, as you know, we've come before you in the past uh, seeking funding for special projects, um, land acquisition and other things. Uh, basically for the next fiscal year, they're just, uh, the trust is seeking uh, $60,000 in CPA funds to continue the operation of the housing assistance office for another year, basically. Would you tell us a breakdown? Um, Thank you. You did send us a breakdown. Yeah, I just don't That's, have it in front of me. It's okay. You. Things itself forty thousand. The club. You're not coming through real well, Betty. Yeah, because I'm I keep getting all these signs saying that I'm not going through. Um, what is the situation with the housing specialist, uh, Bob? We know that um, Leonardi had resigned. Well, his contract had expired, and um, according to procurement procedures, we had to go out for an RFP um, for a new provider of services. 
Uh, it just so happens that Leonardi's company was the only uh, respondent to that RFP. <laughs> Being at such a small part-time job, we didn't have a lot of interest. But they have voted to um, rehire him. Uh, we're negotiating a contract now with town council, and he should be back on board shortly. So the but the budget, um, as I recall, I don't have the figures in front of me, but I believe the budget was forty thousand dollars for the uh, services of the housing specialist and other consultants, ten thousand for the clerk salary, which is uh, myself, and another ten thousand for legal expenses, uh, registry recording fees and uh, office supplies, that kind of stuff. If you remember last time we asked for 247,000, uh, 200 remained uh, earmarked for uh, land acquisition. <laughs> I'm having trouble. Um, you're really breaking up for me. Is that true for the rest of you? Are you clear? Everybody else, I hope? Sort of We're getting clear pretty well. I am. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So does anybody have any questions to Bob? He's given an, an overview. Any questions about uh, this funding. I know you haven't used last year's funding, the 247,000 has not been taken out of the CPC account. Uh, no, the, 40, the 47,000 you gave us last year for um, uh, office uh -huh. and staff is uh we've only used uh fourteen thousand so far we have a balance of yeah. almost thirty four thousand in that account and the land acquisition money uh remains earmarked for that uh next purchase yeah. if we can find one okay um hugh and that was going to be my question that if there is recording fees and so forth there aren't any if there's nothing that's been acquired. And I sort of wonder, well, there was an allocation in the past. Why isn't that sufficient as something against the possibility of something happening in that fiscal year? Well, we have, um, we haven't really had programs operating for the last few months since the housing specialist has been absent. So there hasn't been uh, a lot of legal fees or recording fees. Uh, even the salary account hasn't gone down much. So well, yeah, I, I'm not being critical. I'm simply saying you haven't spent the money that's been appropriated for perfectly good reason. So why does more have to be appropriated when you've got what wasn't spent from the last round? Isn't that available for the for it comes along? Well, whatever is left unspent will probably be swept into a uh, transfer to another uh, a, account to fund some of the programs we have been running, but are unable to fund otherwise. The home purchase so, program, the rehab program, etc. So if you have money left, right? sorry, go ahead, Hugh. Sorry. I, was say, I don't think those get swept each year. I think they're available but i may be wrong Betty would know better probably they can they can um yes they have the right the affordable housing trust um is not subject to the budgetary restrictions that the town budget is uh subject to as we are not either as cpc is not either right so however it means that they will not come back next year they will not be asking for funding next year. Fair enough. You should you should be covered because you had you came last year you and you came this year. You generally you come every two years, um, right. so um, we expect you won't come next year. <laughs> I mean, if you do, 
we'll listen. Hmm. <laughs> well, so does anybody else have it. any questions or anything that they want to say? Do I have I a motion? That we advance it to the public hearing. Okay, for 60000 Okay. Uh, that's Tim Gillespie. The second, please. <laughs> A second on anybody? Yeah, John Bell second. Yeah. John Bell second. Any any comments? Any further comments? Let's move ahead to vote. Tim. Tim Gillespie, aye. Dale. Dale Weber, aye. Garrett. Garrett Stuck, aye. Hugh. Hugh Morton, aye. John. John Bell, aye. Betty Slade, aye. That is unanimous. And Philip Weinberg has just joined. Thank That's you very okay. much. It won't make any difference right now what he votes. So, all right. So the next um, is the. Um, can I skip the playgrounds and and just do the WYAA first? Uh, yeah. I want to skip to six. Um, we've got Ken here, and we actually last time said we were going to head and send send it on. But we, I wanted to give you all one more chance to ask questions uh, about the project. And so, let me get that WYA. All right. So the total was um, 180,450. 180, uh, and that was for irrigation generators um and wells is there any further anything further you want to say and will you guarantee us that that's it <laughs> <laughs> ken guarantee let me let me google what that means <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think uh I, I we've done our homework on this one again and uh the you know the well pump that I have in there was was the highest it could come in. There's a chance you know we, we're we're recording three well heads. There's a good chance it might only be two. So I think we have room in this. We're working on several other bids for the in ground irrigation. So I think uh, I think that's the number we're looking at. I'm you know I'm I'm pretty confident in that number. Yeah. Do you think you could get those in quickly? If how quickly do you think and get all that done? Um as far as getting getting more quotes in or getting the work done? No, getting the work done after May. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's going to be a lot easier than this fencing project that we're going through, which let me, a little aside here, we have poles in two of the fields, uh, so that, that's, that project is moving along great. There's a lot less engineering that's going to go into um, – the irrigation um, that's, you know, once those wellheads are in, it's pretty cut and dry. So uh, as long as the, you know, uh, American well and pump can find water in a reasonable time, then this will go very quickly. Lost you, Betty. Betty's frozen. Yeah. I have yeah, no I idea what anybody saying so I <laughs> so um do are there any other questions and is there a motion I will move to forward to the hearing and I will Hugh Morton yeah. moves I'll second and Dale Weber seconds to move the project for 180,450 to the January public hearing um is there are there any more comments Okay, let's vote. Uh, Tim. Tim Gillespie, aye. Dale. Dale Weber, aye. Garrett. Garrett Stock, aye. Hugh. Hugh Morton, aye. Hugh. Yeah, Hugh Morton, aye. Uh, John also voted aye. John Bell, I. And Phil. Um, yeah, okay, Phil, so I. So that's I just unanimous, just and we'll so, you know, pass that budget on. Phil, I'm glad to.
to see you. We waited for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, Ken. Thank you all. And we will go to the Playgrounds project. And Tim Gillespie and Dana Stewart will be um, discussing that. Hello, everybody. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much for um, having us. Um, I'm Dana Stewart. I'm the recreation director for the town of Westport. Um, myself, along with the support of the Recreation Commission, have been working hard at finding out as much information as we can about the current state of our two town playgrounds that the town is in charge of and then what we need to do to improve them, have them be up to code, have them be usable and safe. Um, Tim, did you want me just to do a general presentation or? I'm trying to put up the, uh, okay, here we go. I think I got it now. Is that it? Yes, that's it. That is it. So we're, um, yeah. we are titling it the Playground Improvement Project. Um, we have been advised to totally replace the Annex Playground. Um, and then, um, we were advised by one playground specialist to do major repairs or upgrades to the Bicentennial playground, but I have um, recent information from another playground specialist, one who actually um, is um, a game time playground equipment representative who went out to physically see that Bicentennial playground, which is game time equipment. And he sent me an email this week basically saying that he feels like the rust um, that is happening in that playground is really extensive and he is recommending total replacement of that playground. Um, that's in contrast to what John LaRue had advised in saying that um, it's possible that playground could last another three to five years um, if major repairs were done, et cetera. Um, and so just to kind of give you some context, I really like this analogy. Um, Travis Armas from MRC Game Time kind of said, you know, it's, especially with the Bison Tail Playground, it's like a used car. You know, how much money are you going to keep putting into it <laughs> before you make the decision you just need a new car? Um, so I, I kind of liked that analogy. But anyway, um, so the recommendation, what we're recommending um, through our consultations with various playground representatives. Sorry, I'm hearing some feedback now. So, um, is that a total replacement of the annex playground is recommended? Um, this playground is 28 years old. It's a wooden playground, and right now it is um, showing splintered or cracked wood planks and deck boards, rotting wood posts in the ground from swing sets. Railroad ties sticking out of the ground, cracked, worn plastic on chains that kids hold on the tire swing, log hole plugs are missing, seesaw seat is broken, cracked slides, missing hardware caps due to corrosion, and more. Um, the ground area there is currently wood chips, as is Bicentennial, um, which um, is not ideal for wheelchair accessibility. Um, so we would like to replace that with a more modern ground covering of a rubberized surface. So um, we were able to get some estimated quotes that you can see there on the screen from various playground companies, the lowest being 221,000, the highest being 559,000, um, just a touch over. Um, you know, then you see the two that are more in the mid range of the three to almost 400 range. Um, some of those may not include the demolition of the current playground structure as well as preparation of the land. So those two figures, depending on whether we can get community volunteers to help us with that and or the highway department to help us with that, um, or if we're going to have to pay a landscape company or another um, you know, company to, to do that work for us, that price may go up. Um, so included in this packet, you may have had time to review some of the um, comments on social media that I took pictures of. 
um, it's, it's, and, and I'll talk about Bicentennial here in a minute too, um, with their needs, but, you know, that was really just to show you that our community is aware that our two town playgrounds are not in good shape at all. Um, I really, you know, it, it's really a shame that, um, you know, a lot of people in our town feel like they have to go to neighboring towns in order to go to a good playground. Um, you know, it doesn't look very good for our town. And, um, you know, I think people question, you know, well, why isn't the town taking care of our town playgrounds? Um, so we're trying to find the funds to do that. And it's the Recreation Department and Recreation Commission's goal that both our two town playgrounds are safe and enjoyable places for our community to have. Um, those are some pictures that are being shown of our annex playground um, that is made of wood. Um, you can see though there's significant rust in with the bolts there too, cracked parts of the slide. That's a chain that kids hold when they're on the tire swing. Um, and the, just a lot of damage in, within the wood itself. You can see the rotting and the cracking and the missing caps for the holes. Um, and that's also a place where bees and wasps can go in. And the sand area at the Annex Playground is infested with wasps every summer. <laughs> so there's a whole section of the playground that can't be used. Um, they're luckily not real harmful to people. Um, they don't tend to sting, but they, we have to put up a sign saying that, you know, the wasps are here and we can't spray poison because it's a playground. Um, and then that's the fencing. There's some um, damage to the fencing area around there too. Um, does anyone, before I move on to the Bicentennial Playground, does anyone have any questions about the Annex Playground? Sorry, I, I, Betty, did you have a comment? I didn't hear you. I think you're muted. Sorry, this is Hugh Morton. I, I have oh. the hand up. Uh, as far as the wasps are concerned, I understand you can't spray stuff as the kids are using it, but why it doesn't last forever, I assume. Can't you close it off, spray this year, and use it next year? Well, the whole playground is deteriorating, so our goal is to replace yeah, but as far as the wasp section is concerned. So the if wasps seems, are seasonal and they only infest the sand in the summer. Um, so you want to use it. My, that's my point. I mean, you're saying that it can't be used because of the wasps. I understand that when they're present and you can't spray when people are going to use it because it's an insecticide. I understand that. Right. But can't you spray this year, have it off limits, get rid of the wasps and next year put it back in operation? Or is there some problem with that? Well, I was told by the pesticide person that you shouldn't be spraying poison in sand that kids play with. I don't, I did not investigate if you spray poison one year and then close off the playground for a whole year, if the poison would still affect the children the following year. So well, I don't know if we, we have to investigate are, taking out the sand there completely. There are things that are dangerous you need to stay away from. There are also people that overreact to everything. So it's a legitimate question, but it'd be nice to know because if a section is unusable because of the wash, then and it could be remedied, that brings you back a section. We did I'm try sure. to remedy it by um, spraying a water and I think it was peppermint oil solution. Um, our old maintenance guy, Wayne, he did that for us and that had no effect. Um, so we did attempt a kind of natural solution um, I haven't investigated using poison, so I don't know. I can make one comment. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the wasps in the sand is just one of many symptoms of deterioration in this playground. Mm -hmm. And there are people that used to bring their kids to this playground, and they now don't bring mm -hmm. them anymore. They take them to Little Compton or Tiverton or another town because they don't mm -hmm. feel that that playground is as safe and as fun for their children as it used to be. So I think the, the, the big picture is that the whole, the whole <laughs> facility is degraded to a point that it doesn't really make sense to repair it. We either have to get rid of it or replace it. 
And I think that's the decision the town needs to make. Uh, okay, well, I, my quick reaction, I realize these are estimates, things change, but close to $600,000, it sounds like Disneyland, rather than a simple playground for small kids in town. And I know these guys want to sell their stuff, and it probably looks very nice, et cetera, but boy, uh, the 201 is more doable in my mind. The middle class ones are probably understated because, as Dana said, they don't provide for site work and so forth, which has to be done in some fashion or other. But it seems to be an awful lot of money. Well, I, that's why in comparison, I printed out and included in the packet the article from um, the that was in October 2022 from Dartmouth Regional Park and Playground, as I have been looking at neighboring towns and what their um, community preservation is providing. Um, so the most recent one, voters approved $512,086 for the Dartmouth Community Preservation Act's reserves to upgrade the Dartmouth Regional Park Playground Project. And that's only half of the cost of their playground project. So it is in comparison, the quotes we're getting from playground companies is in comparison to what other neighboring towns are spending on their newer playgrounds. It's only foolish amounts, that doesn't mean we just spend, you just spend foolish amounts too. It's sort of like, your neighbor is jumping off the cliff, therefore yours should too. I mean, on its, on its own merits, maybe that's what it costs, and maybe I'm just out of touch, but boy, it's a lot of money. The elementary school just built a new playground, and as I understand it, it was at least in this range that they spent for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, they use Compan, which is the highest quote we got at the elementary school. Um, I know they did get funding for it. I'm not sure how much they spent. I did ask that question. I've been in communication with the principal Duquette about their playground. Um, it does appear to be finished. We saw pictures of it. Um, it looks real nice, but um, um, I asked principal Duquette what the final cost of it was and she's yet to get back to me. So unfortunately I don't have that info for this meeting, but. But these are sort of modular things you can you can uh, cherry pick the features you want to have to try to get within a budget that makes sense and that gives you a useful playground. You yeah, don't that have may to. make some sense. This may be, I mean, I don't know the details. You and Dana are much closer, of course, but this may be the uh, uh, Cadillac version or the Mercedes version, if you will, rather than the Ford or Chevrolet. Um, it's our hope too that this will, you know, be the start of being able to approach other local businesses and get other possible grants that would help us with the totality of the cost of this project as well as possibly the bicentennial project. Um, there's been a great debate in our recreation commission about whether we just need to repair some of the aspects of the bicentennial playground or replace it in whole. As I kind of mentioned, there's also varying opinions from a couple different playground companies. Um, and so I think, you know, I, I've been to the ARPA funds committee meeting. They seem interested in this project. Um, I've proposed it to, as a capital project improvement plan as well. So I think, it makes sense possibly that um, if CPC can provide some funding that we can then work towards getting even more funding if needed. I would say CPC is your only hope. Oh, because Just, as far as the operating me. budget is concerned, I'm sorry, there's no gonna be no room for it. We, and the question, question of how many cops, firefighters, so forth we have, we have five people in the highway, highway department. CPC's money is segregated, so it's a legitimate question here. The operating budget isn't going to provide any. Um, could I, Michael Roderick, could, I, and, uh, could I ask John to talk? He has his hand up. And the $350,000, that's for both playgrounds or just for bicentennial? It's it, the total estimate Panic. that we have talked about in our recreation commission for helping both playgrounds have we've estimated between 700,000 to a million. Um, so the 350,000 could go toward both playgrounds, depending on how much other funding we can possibly 
procure? I, I, I don't know, but it seems to me like the cart is before the horse. Maybe you should go and see what other funding you should get and then come back to the CPC to fill I have. I have. Um, I participated in a Zoom meeting for a park grant and they don't fully fund projects. They just fund projects that have already had a commitment from some other source. I've also gotten that same feeling when I've attended the ARPA funds meeting as well as the capital projects meeting. And, you know, I understand, you know, playgrounds seem maybe like secondary, of course, to a lot of other things in town. But then we have to be faced with the final question of like, when do we tear, when do the playgrounds get so bad we just tear them down and we don't have playgrounds in town? But see, I, I, I support it. I've used the playground when my kids were younger. And then we started bringing them to Little Compton. So I understand the issue, but I'm just wondering if you're looking for 350 and we give it to you and you don't get the other funding, that's not going to be enough to do anything. Oh. We won't do anything if it's not enough. We'll give the money back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's, okay. it's, it's enough to get started for sure. Um, you know, I believe we could just thinking of the annex playground, we could definitely work at destroy, you know, getting rid of the de demolishing the existing playground, prepping the land. Um, we can start with the installation. There's there's other like like Tim was saying, you know, with every playground company, you can e you can put as much playground equipment or as less as you want, mm -hmm. and you can always add more if needed. You know. Um, you know, if you want a zip line versus swings versus a slide, you know, it's adjustable. So it all depends. We're working hard to try and get funding so that we can get started and then make a playground that, you know, as great as we can make it. Obviously, we don't want the Taj Mahal, <laughs> but um, um, these are the figures that we're getting from is it or play Dana, could, Garrett, could you speak? Yes. Please, um, Garrett. Yeah, so so Dana, I, I think you were you're just touching on on what my question is about, and that is, um, you know, trying to understand what what's the what's the um, sort of criterion that you're using to design the playground? Because as as you say, I mean, you could put in uh, more or less equipment. That's probably a, a big part of the cost. So, can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, is it that we're just trying to have a playground that's as nice as Little Compton or Dartmouth, or is is it is it that this is what we need for the kids to have fun? I mean, what what so are what, what you thinking? Sure, thank you. Um, so when we talk to each playground representative, ask them for initial design. Um, the things we asked for were swings, slide. Um, I would like some spinning feature because I have three kids and they all love the spinning feature. You know, it's like those roundabout things that circle or um, something like that and some kind of climbing structure. And then also the um, rubberized ground so that it's um, more accessible for people who have accessibility issues. Um, and so within the packet that was given, um, we've got you know, at least four designs. Um, that being said, Colin as you saw, was the most expensive, uh, maybe most elaborate. Uh, they, you know, played with a zip line and um, some, you know, a, a climbing feature that looked like a ship um, and a netting thing. Um, some of the other designs were a little more basic. So that's where, you know, it was a, it's been a learning experience for us too, to see, the difference in prices between the different companies, but also to experience the different ways the company representatives communicate and the different presentations. You can see Compen was a beautiful presentation and what they gave us, but it is the most expensive. Okay, question from Tim Gillespie. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing you one of the proposals that was sent to us for the annex and they've got some graphics here that show it. The, the space is limited. This is not a big playground. So it's not nearly as elaborate as Tiverton or Fairhaven or any of the bigger towns. And this is maybe more elaborate than we would actually do. But it's representative of the kind of structures that you can get. This one in particular is giving us a sort of a maritime 
uh, fishing boat motif with a steering wheel on a chip and that kind of stuff. And, you know, you can pick and choose what features you actually want to have. And these are probably more than we could actually fit in there. But well, well, everything they presented here, it can fit. Um, the zip line feature, I did ask him instead of a zip line because I thought that would be super cool. I visited the one in Tiverton. It's amazing. Even parents love to use it. Um, but I asked him to just put in the bank of swings. Um, and and But it, it actually didn't pr change the price too much, um, surprisingly enough. Um, and then that part of white that you see on the ground there, um, that they left sand. I have since asked them to take out all sand um, because of the wasp issue. And then they use different colors for the rubberized material. I don't, I'm not sure. I'd have to look back at um, the details if that costs more to do that. Like things like that, we can eliminate if needed. Um, but the rubberized material is really helpful to make it um, accessible. And it also eliminates having to, you know, put in new wood chips all the time. Those are some other playgrounds. Actually, Jim or Tim, if you go back, that's the one at Tiverton Playground, the what, kind of green that one. Mm -hmm. That one. Yeah, and I yeah. looks like kind of a farm theme. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yes, I, 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 I am really having such a lot of trouble. I'm on the phone as well as the computer. I have heard everything that was said. I'd like to ask this question and get the ideas of the CPC. I believe that we're in a way asking for a match. This is the matching funds which would give the give give them the opportunity to get other funds. And the 350 would be before both playgrounds. Um, we could give them less, which would give them less of a match or we could give them nothing. But I've looked at other towns, the playgrounds, very expensive. The first thing I said to Tim was, it's too expensive. Exactly, I felt like you did, you, mm -hmm. given the circumstances in the town with financing. However, it is CPA's role to develop playgrounds. This was passed a mm -hmm. special, um legislation to pass for playgrounds and recreation and so it seems like it's a uh, uh something very um what is the word uh, costly and not needed but the the commonwealth feels it is and uh so it's a point right now that if they can have this match they can develop over the years this may take years they may come back again. They may not. That's that's how I'm thinking about it. It is like it enables us to build partnerships with other entities like Bay Coast Bank, for example. They might kick in a couple hundred thousand. We haven't asked them yet. Right. But that's the kind of thing when the town shows support, these other entities are more likely to kick in. Hugh? I just wondered if the, has there been any consideration of replacing what is now in the annex playground with the same things in a new that is redoing it in a sense rather than what i sort of hear is disneyland working in the background but that may not be accurate i understand but just replacing what is there now with new versions of what is there any idea of what that cost would turn out to be and i think your points are legitimate i I cringe at the expense, but CPC money is segregated for certain purposes, and this is one of them. I was just saying that <clears throat> data should not anticipate any subsidy from the town operating side. That isn't going to happen. Correct. Correct. Dana? Um, so we did not look into um, replacing the playground just as it is now, because being that it was, oh, <clears throat> forgive me, I'm having trouble now coughing. Um, being that it was built 28 years ago um, and the fact it's made of wood and it's rotting. Um, it was, 
we stay right. away from okay. wood projects. Um, the more modern materials do last longer. Um, if the the group likes, I can try and get information from each of the playground companies about an average of how long their materials last. Um, being that we live in a seaside town, I'm not sure if that varies or not. Um, but um, every year the materials get better and better from my understanding. Um, so I guess the answer to your question is no, we did not look at replacing it just as it is now with a wood playground. I think that would be useful, but uh, the zip line makes me cringe <laughs> in terms of possible liabilities and so forth. But that's a whole other issue. So yes, I, I'm persuaded yeah. by Tim. Garrett? Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I mean, I, I, I'm convinced that the playgrounds need to be replaced. I'm convinced that it's expensive. I mean, I've, I've actually been involved with some other playgrounds and, and um, you know, seen it up close. I think Tim makes a really good point about being able to go out and find partners um, in the community. And I was just wondering, is, is there... Um, I mean, would there be any any possibility for you know like a sign that says uh, yes. Bay Coast Bank has contributed to playground or something that might make it more attractive to some of these community institutions? Absolutely, we could have a nice sign at each playground location stating all of the donors and people who helped make this project okay. possible, including the CPC. Absolutely. Um, I also did have a recent conversation with Representative Paul Schmidt. Um, he also is concerned about our town playgrounds and was wondering if I what I've looked into and I let him know what we're currently trying to do. Um, he did um, say that between himself and Senator Michael Rodericks that they'd be happy to look into possible funding there. Um, two offices could possibly help us with too. Of course, there's no guarantees right now. It was a casual conversation, but I found that very encouraging. Um, we also had one of our other Recreation Commission members talk to a manager at our local Walmart, and um, they also said that Walmart has certain grants for projects like this and that we'd be welcome to apply. So it's it's it takes time. It takes, um, you know, boots on the ground and investigating to sometimes get some of the other funding. But I think if the town is committed to improving our two, our two playgrounds, others will follow. At least that's our hope. Dana, could I ask a question? Um, yes. If, if, if these, are, these different things were put on the uh, uh, playground, can they be taken out Yes. Um, so if an equi equipment, as you can see in that one diagram, again, this is just the one from Compen Company. Um, but so, you know, there's separate different structures. So if there's a problem with something, um, they can take it out and replace it and or just take it out and have it be gone. Well, there's a question also that you talked about for the town that the there is the discussion that the building there and the property will be sold right and and what happens to the playground there as well as the one behind the right. town hall annex right um i don't have those answers right now um, but my hope would be because we have taken the time to care for these two properties, um, to have it be enjoyed by our com community as a whole, that um, those two areas might stay as town recreation areas. If the if they do choose to so sell the building and for whatever purpose it may be used, um, it's it would be my desire to keep those areas for the town. I don't know if that would be possible. Uh, one of the questions would be if it could be separated out from the property. That may be a building right. department question. Um, Possibly. There's a lot. We're having a lot of issues here, and um, do we want to give you another month to look more into some of these issues? Uh, would the CPC willing to do that? I would ask I them again, the public hearing. <laughs> Tim, Tim. 
Yeah, I would say if we could move to the public hearing, in the meantime, we'll do more legwork and get more answers. We're talking about 350,000, is that correct? Okay. Yes. Uh, and that will, will be sort of the money for match, a match money, hopefully up to 17 or a million dollars, okay? Um, so you have a lot of things to look at during Christmas. <laughs> I would hope that one thing would be considering how replacing the existing with new equipment would cost, et cetera. I know you're working hard on it, but when you get in the hands of the salesmen, they want to sell stuff. And they're, they're experts in the field. Yeah, but they're salesmen. So they want you to buy the biggest and best and most expensive and have everything else. The kids have been perfectly happy, I think, with the status that was there before it deteriorated. So replacing it at, with new may not make any difference financially, I understand, but that's something I'd like to find out about. Because if it did, maybe that's the answer. But I'm just saying, you're going to do more evaluation. It's just a question I would ask for part of it. I would suggest that you go on to the Community Preservation Coalition website and look at recreation pro projects all over the state and see who they've dealt with and if they can be of any help. There have been quite a few, and it's easy to do. Once you go in, you just look, put in recreation, and then about 40, 50 projects come up. Um, That'll I help you a lot. I, I thank you for that suggestion. And I do know that um, the MRC Game Time um, contact Travis Armes, who we've been talking to, has been doing all of Dartmouth's um, playgrounds. Um, they have a state contract, um, which makes it very convenient for them to be able to work with Dartmouth. Um, I, when I spoke with him on the phone, um, he went into it a bit with me. I probably would need to learn a little more about, you know, is he the only company that has a state contract versus other companies? Um, but, um, and then with Compon using or being the one that helped the school too. Um, so at least, you know, we are speaking with um, two playground companies that have been used locally. Um, but I would be more than willing to look at others um, in order to compare and go on that website. So thank you, Betty. So does anybody have a motion? Betty, I'll make the motion that we move uh, this to the uh, the public hearing next month. And I will second that. Uh, is there any discussion about it? Do we want to give any more? Anything else we want to say? Okay. Um, we'll vote. Tim? Tim Gillespie, aye. Dale? Dale Weber, aye. Garrett? Your so stuck aye. Hugh. Hugh Morton, aye. John. John Bell, aye. Phil. Phil Weinberg, aye. Betty Sled, aye. That's unanimous. Um, Thank you, 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 you are you didn't Thank give you. us much about the other, but um, <laughs> but you put them all together. Talk with Paul Schmidt. Yes. And all them and Bay Coast. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, Dana. Bye bye. Okay. That's the subject. Now, the last sorry, um, Alan Decker, but we will now talk about the Snell Creek conservation restriction, the um, desire to uh, for the uh, CPC to recommend that we buy a conservation restriction on the property. Alan? Good evening. Good evening, everybody. And first, let me apologize. I seem to be having problems with my camera. It tells me it's on, but I can't. I don't know what's going on. As long as you can hear me, though, I'm, I'm happy with that. And so, um, Chairman Slade or Chairperson Slade, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Alan Decker with the Buzzards Bay Coalition. Um, and what we have brought to CPC for consideration is an open space project 
that will provide passive public recreational opportunities along with, <clears throat> excuse me, natural resource protection, in particular, protection of Snell Creek, which as you would have seen in the application, is a, uh, a rare beast, if you will, uh, in that Snell Creek, along with several other uh, creeks, uh, brooks, uh, waterways, I should say, in the town of Westport, uh, have native run sea, native sea run brook trout in them. This is uh, one of the few spots actually uh, <laughs> in this uh, part, of the, part of the nation candidly that has that has this um, it is also because of that the creek is designated by the commonwealth uh, mass wildlife and um, uh, natural heritage as being a cold water fishery resource worthy of protection a little bit of background for this project what we are proposing as um, as ms gillespie I'm, I'm sorry as ms slade um, uh, opened with is the purchase of a conservation restriction by the town over 29 acres of this parcel. And thank you very much for bringing up, I'm um, sorry they are in black and white, but uh, um, these, are, these are maps that were in the, in the package that show the property. You may recall, this was a property, <clears throat> excuse me again, I apologize. This was a property that was uh, brought to the town's attention because the former owner had proposed a conversion of use, meaning that the property was enrolled in Chapter 61A with the Commonwealth. That reduces the property's taxes in return for uh, generating income from the property, in this case, in an agricultural fashion. So they then found a buyer who was proposing a different use for the property. And so because of the enrollment, it was necessary for the town to be notified. And, and we learned of this opportunity from actually from members of the planning board who were notified, as well as members of the Agricultural and Open Space Council, uh, tr Trust Council or Funding Council, I believe. And uh, we were very interested in pursuing this because of Snell Creek's location, this map that's here on the on, on the screen at the at the moment shows uh, the the property in question is just above the word the words that say Snell Creek identifying the creek. It's just north of that. It's 31 acres, essentially running roughly east west. Does front on Main Road, runs to the west, um, and is kind of just behind uh, Meadowbrook Lane and the extension of that. Uh, relatively new subdivision there to the west. Um, when we learned of this opportunity, we appeared before the selectmen and and spoke at the public hearing that they held um, about this. Just as a as a little bit additional background, because of the chapter land status, the landowner had to give the town the opportunity to match the contract that was in place with the pr prospective buyer and well not and but or assign their right to acquire the property this right of first refusal to an organization like buzzards bay coalition and that's in fact what what happened at our request we were interested we asked that the the town do this there was much discussion at the at the select board's uh meeting and they did vote to make the assignment we went through all the necessary steps to complete the transaction and acquired the property at the very beginning of December. We had to borrow money in order to make the acquisition, principally because we had to match what the former owner was willing to pay for the property. So we bought the property for $675,000. What we are proposing is protecting 20, at this point, 29 of those acres of the 31 we are still, you'll be um, interested to know, we are in negotiation, in contact with the former buyer, uh, trying to work out a, a deal with her because the property does have a house on it. Uh, you may be familiar, this is just north of Westport Central Village, if you will. There is a, there is a farmhouse, a 
very close to Main Road. This is on the um, it's on the west side of Main of Main Road. So it's it's on your it's on your left as you're headed away from Central Village North, or it's on your right as you head into Central Village, heading south. In any case, we are proposing uh, potentially with her to sell her the house and a surrounding two acre parcel, most mostly a frontage lot, although it, it is important to note we would retain enough frontage for an access point off main road for our long-term ownership. We're interested in owning this property to protect Snell Creek, connect, uh, protect other habitat and natural resources on the property, but it also gives us an opportunity uh, to then connect this property to the other existing conservation properties that run all along Angeline Brook, which is also a sister waterway like Snell that has the the native sea run brook trout in it. Um, and we've we along with the local land trust, Westport Land Conservation Trust, and the town through the Conservation Commission have protected. Uh, a great amount of acreage along Angeline Brook, and we envision this property being a gateway to to access better access, additional access to to that assemblage of conservation land um, along Angeline Brook, and at the same time beginning uh, and more can, more protection of Snell Creek. Um, you would have seen in the application that we've proposed a $700,000 overall project budget that covers the $675,000 purchase price that we were obligated to pay along with project costs. Here it is. Thank you very much of $25,000. What we're seeking um, is a contribution or uh, yeah, project component from CPC of CPA funds in the order on the order of $100,000. Um, the other funds, as was mentioned in the in the prior parks uh, application, there's leveraging that can happen here um, to reach the $700,000 total or the other $600,000. Um, Mozart's Bay Coalition will do private fundraising. The potential sale of house and the surrounding two acres would be a component of those BBC funds there, the 420. I don't know exactly at this point where we're going to land if we reach an agreement with uh, with the former the former buyer, but we have already fundraised privately uh, some money, some portion of that 420. We've put this USF and WS, that is the Federal Fish and Wildlife Service, they have a grant program that supports protecting properties like these that have wetlands and water courses and are actually uh, good habitat for migratory birds. Uh, so we've put in for that. Um, we have actually helped the town uh, capture a mini grant from BBNEP as an acronym for Buzzards Bay National Estuary Program. It's only available to municipal applicants. So it is common for us in our open space work throughout the watershed for Buzzards Bay to work with municipalities in submitting applications under that program. Uh, land protection is an eligible use. And very recently, um, the, the town planning board and the town planner were notified that that $30,000 request uh, has been awarded. You'll see on there also that there's uh, potential, there's a there's an interest of ours in talking with the town open space, or I really should call it the Agricultural and Open Space Council. I apologize for mixing those up. We're, um, for, for funding from them, they were interested in seeing this property get protected. Uh, we have not formally met with them, but, um, we intend to do so, although I am, uh, I've been made aware that they, in order for them to have funding to, uh, to put towards a project, if they chose to do so, they would have to work with other elements of town hall um, in order to borrow that money. And that's, um, that might be less than, uh, less than ideal 
um, right now. Uh, although, um, you know, a, a key $150,000 contribution from the town towards this project would make it would make it a successful a successful project. Where that money comes from, so to speak, um, is is uh, flexible is flexible. So um, that that's an element we could we could look at in the narrative. I, uh, this does support and help to uh, meet planning documents that the town the town has in place. The master plan, the open space and recreation plan. It does also supports elements that the Commonwealth likes to see. There was a mention earlier on other other projects. There are things that the Commonwealth likes to see uh, supported for for the public. As I said, we would also definitely um, include public access for this property. That would be in the conservation restriction. It's it's our strategy, if you will, that the Conservation Commission would hold the conservation restriction um, on behalf of the town. Um, we have done that in a couple of other scenarios in Westport where uh, the Conservation Commission is holding conservation restrictions on on property that we have we have protected so it's not something that uh that would be new in working with with the conservation commission i have um <laughs> I, I feel like i've spoken at length but i am and i don't want to belabor any points i am more than happy to uh to answer any questions at this time that that commission members committee members have of of us or or of this project but um, we um, are very interested in, in partnering with CPC on this, understanding that open space is one of the buckets that uh, funding for funding of CPA money can be used. Thank you very much. Okay. I'd like to add a couple things to that discussion. Um, I also have been speaking with open space committee and um, there is a hesitancy to come to the town asking for $50,000 more debt. And um, I proposed that perhaps the response to that would be that the CPC would consider contributing 150,000 to the conservation restriction purchase. Um, I've asked, the Alan Decker that he would give us the appraisal to and he's indicated that he will but that it's clear that 150,000 is in a value that will be uh, uh, would be would come in the appraisal um, we will also do a review of that appraisal which we do for every project um, I've, I received a letter from the planning board supporting this very strongly and i believe that uh, they're the ones who first uh, contacted bbc about it this is our first uh, project with anyone from out of town so it's interesting but we at least have the um the approval and the strong support of the planning board in this so what i'm suggesting that we get the appraisal. Um, we learn what price that um, is expected to be paid by the by the purchaser, and that we, I understand there may be some horse farm there. Um, uh, so that would be another thing that would be of interest to us. Uh, but I would recommend that we. Um, be willing to consider the hundred and fifty thousand. Any uh, questions? I think you, Morton. Uh, a couple of questions. I'm <clears throat> all in favor of open space. I don't have a great deal of regard for the master plan and very little of what the state wants to do, but that's not a matter. Uh, open space is very good. <laughs> Two questions come to mind. One is, and Betty sort of touched on it, but I'd really like to know. Sure. This is the purchase of, an, of a conservation restriction. What happens to the usage of the land 
I realize that development is prohibited, but what happens, number one? And second, I wonder if you might consider, have considered having the land trust hold the restriction. It's a little bit incestuous when the town holds restrictions on itself in a sense. So those were my questions. Sure, so um, I'm ha I appreciate those questions. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the conservation restriction, uh, you're, you're absolutely correct, would, would close out the development potential for the for the for the property under which the CR is is held or over which the property is held, what we what we would reserve the ability to do are typical of other things that we do in our open space uh, conservation work in Westport and throughout throughout the uh, the watershed. Namely, we would reserve the right to uh, put in uh, trails. There, this property actually has some what i'll call social trails on it already things things that have prop popped up the former owner um was on the property and uh what we would do is formalize a trail network connect it uh well we can't at this point we can't literally connect it to the assemblage of conservation property to the west on angeline brook because there's private ownership in between i will tell you we are hopeful of working out uh, some sort of a, a project in the future to close that gap. But uh, trail network, habitat restoration, uh, if, if, if necessary, uh, in, in, the pro in and around, in and on the property. Um, we would also, um, in this case, because of the public access, reserve the ability to make it uh, uh, pleasing and attractive for the public to come to, meaning we would put in uh, things that would make it easier to access. And and I'm I'm not trying to I'm not trying to talk around it. I want to answer the question. What that means is uh, amenities that that the public would like to see. Um, uh, trailhead um, uh, kiosk with information about the property, uh, possibly benches along the way. Uh, perhaps because Snell Creek is there, a, uh, a, a, a bridge component that enables access over the, over the creek to the back of the property, uh, boardwalks where it perhaps gets a little uh, uh, soft, um, perhaps uh, through the wetlands, uh, working with Conservation Commission as needed. Um, those, those, types of, those types of things. And really not much else beyond that. Um, we want the property to remain in a natural state. We want Snell Creek to continue to uh, to flow and to provide the, the benefit that it does with uh, with its wetlands and the ability to uh, ameliorate uh, uh, heavy heavy downfall of rain. Uh, you know, hold hold on to water. That's an, a resiliency element that is that is part of this project. So that's it, really. Just allow. Um, make it amenable for the public to do passive recreation there. Um, uh, the you might shut up if you duck blinds and rent them out. I I'm sorry, I didn't catch that, sir. I said you might set up a couple of duck blinds and rent them out get some revenue. <laughs> um, certainly, certainly we are, and, and it, it goes, uh, it's, it's important to note, we are not against, uh, we're not against hunting um, on, on properties that we own. Then um, the second part of your question, I think, uh, had had to do with going going forward. Um, we intend to own this property long term. We we have we've done this. We we already have some property up on Lions Brook that we own long term. Uh, that's one of one of our reserves. Uh, it's the other one in 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 Westport. But we intend for this to be, as I said, a uh, a welcome mat to this growing assemblage of conservation land and the partnership that we would have with the town is working with the conservation commission um, to complete the complete the, C the cr they would hold it they would check up on us every so often to make sure that, that we are complying that we said we wouldn't do this and we're not i think that's getting at the second part of the question if i left out a piece or a part please please let me know and i'll be happy to fill in there's more that as far as ownership of the restriction that I have more confidence in private entities who are subject potentially to suit if they don't 
if they collaborate with a later owner, will say and ignore the restriction. So that I was placed the land trust would fall into that category. Whether a later uh, yep. evolution of the town without anybody here involved could possibly collude and and override your restrictions. That's so, the way okay. So yes, yeah, and I pr appreciate you refreshing the recollection because of I believe because of the use of CPA funds. This restriction is how the town gets an interest in the protection of the property. Exactly. Town is not, not the owner of the property, but right. holds holds a partial pro, uh, partial property interest. Now, um, it's it's possible we could partner and and the town could co-hold with with Westport Land Conservation Trust. Uh, we could explore that, but there hasn't been any any discussion of that at this point. Just raising the thought, nothing more more pressing than that. Understood, thank you. Could I, could, it's Phil Weinberg, who's um, on the CONCOM? Um, yeah, so um, the, the Conservation Commission has before it a project that involves um, impact on, uh, um, on Angeline Brook, which is a cold water fishery. And, and I bring it up just because in the course of that, I've become just more familiar with how imperiled um, these cold water fisheries are and how unique they are in the Commonwealth. And um, to the extent to say that the, you know, Westport is fortunate enough or maybe has a stewardship um, responsibility or sensitivity, you know, to trying to protect these and the, really the way that they are protected is, um, you know, to keep groundwater flowing into them because groundwater is the cold water that the fish need. The more development or the potential for development on that kind of property, you know, means that groundwater gets drawn into homes. Uh, and, um, and it doesn't take a whole lot given the uh, condition that uh, Snell Creek is, is in particular because um, so my communication has been about that um, is so um, so I think it has that kind of unique quality um, and I don't know if uh, Snell is a tributary out to the uh, east branch of the river it, um, it is. yeah it is. so and you know and and so uh, and again one of the things that we've been pointing to in terms of looking at uh, you know, reducing nitrogen loading in the East Branch, you know, has been the effect of conservation, putting land in conservation, you know, to prevent uh, further nitrogen loading of the river. So I think they're just too good environmental um, gains to be obtained um, in this kind of situation, you know, which I think, you know, we, if we can, we should um, take advantage of. And Phil, don't doesn't the CONCOM hold th most of these restrictions? Um, well, there certainly um, is a pattern of uh, of uh, us being approving the um, or making a recommendation to approve the conservation restriction. To be honest, I'm not sure how many of those that you know we actually hold. So, but you do hold uh, them. Yeah. Okay, Tim. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just um, thinking that Betty, your idea of uh, increasing it to 150 could be uh, brilliant in that it would make it not necessary to go after the the uh, agricultural open space outfit. Who would we then have to borrow money? And borrowing money in the town right now is not everybody's favorite idea because there's so much of it going on. So I would second the idea of increasing this to 150,000. Uh, Hugh? Would... Hugh, do you have a, you're. I was gonna echo what Tim was saying, because this would okay. have to, borrowing would have to go through the FinCom and this and that. And for all the reasons he stated, I, we might go along, but we would not be enthusiastic. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to be sure that the BBC is committing to pay the full amount, the seven hundred thousand. If we give you one hundred and fifty, you will give five fifty or find find the five fifty. 
correct? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's well, we're interested. <laughs> yeah, we're absolutely yes. interested in clearing our loan. Right. And, and we would we yeah, absolutely. What what makes our strategy work in our in our view is a is a contribution from the town of Westport of uh, this 150 that we're talking about. And I appreciate the CPC's willingness to uh, to consider the greater amount of 150. I'm not interested in 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 coming to the coming to the town through the uh, Ag Open Space Council and asking them to consider uh, <laughs> increasing town debt in any way, shape or form. We're super flexible on that. I also know that this fits in a bucket that that CPA can fund. So we are very it also makes it cleaner, as was mentioned. Um, you know, this this can be a, a, a straightforward, straightforward uh, strategy and, and project for, for success. Absolutely. Can I ask you about the 420,000? Um, do you have an idea of how much you're charging for the property? Huh. The seller, uh, that two acres or is yeah. that in negotiation? It is in a negotiation and I'm not directly involved in those negotiations. So I don't know where it stands. We're certainly, we know what, a two acre house lot in in the town of Westport can quote unquote go for. So we're aware of that. And there's an existing house on the property. So um, I, I can't speak to what what we're looking for from this, the, the, the former prospective buyer, but I'm confident we're going to strike a deal. Um, and and I understand that you're interested in knowing what that is. And yes, and should this move forward to the uh, to the public hearing stage in January, which I sincerely hope happens. Hopefully I'll be able to report at that time, if not before, a refinement of what's been committed in the in the in the budget. And, okay. Yeah. Hugh, one more question. Yeah, I'm gonna say, Betty, I don't think we really care. Buzzard Bay is stuck with the property. This is just a question of how they pay off a mortgage that they have acquired to buy the land. If they don't raise it, nothing happens except they got a problem. I know. I problem. just wanted everybody to know that. <laughs> uh, one person's problem is another person's opportunity. <laughs> so may I have a motion? Betty, I, 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 had a, I had another question. Oh, sorry, Garrett. Um, so, Alan, I, I know that the former buyer wanted to... Um, former prospective buyer wanted, wanted to have a horse farm there. It sounds like like she still does. How would that affect the the, um, the conservation aspects of this project? Oh, I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, that, and we're aware of that as well. Um, the conservation aspects really uh, aren't, aren't impacted to, to any to any large degree. The 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 lot that would be created would be right up on main road uh so there is plenty of buffer between the back part of that proposed lot and the wetlands and then the course of snell creek so i i don't foresee any issue there and and candidly the habitat that is beneficial um is actually um, back from the road, um, I learned about this property uh, when this when the opportunity came up. I had no idea that this used to be a chicken farm, um, but it did. And and I've learned from longtime West Porters that that eggs from this particular property went literally all over what's now called the South Coast. There were a lot of chickens there. There's the remnants of those buildings, um, kind of back in the overgrown part cl cl close to the woods but um i i don't see cu cutting off the frontage lot um being a problem for the conservation element nor is it a problem for public access because as i said we would configure the lot such that we retain fr enough frontage on main road for access back off of main road and there are there is another access point now as well um off of a, a clam clamshell road that runs that runs north of the property that we 
have ac access on. Um, and then hopefully, uh, not projecting, well, I am projecting, we can uh, directly connect uh, by working out some some deal behind behind this property that literally connected into that the existing assemblage of conservation land. But in some, I don't believe that a two acre frontage lot with an existing house right up on Main Road is going to have an appreciable effect on the conservation values that the conservation restriction would protect. I appreciate the question. This this land was the Petty family farm. The last person to live there um, was Muriel Petty. And um, the one who inherited it has taken off a portion of it. And so there's just that two acre left. So do I have a motion now? John Bell moves $150,000 to the public hearing in January. The public hearing in January, yes. Project, okay, okay. Second was Dale, I believe. Sure. Okay. Yep, we'll second it. Okay. All right. Any more comments? Okay, Tim. Muted, Tim. Tim Gillespie, aye. Dale. Dale Liver, aye. Garrett. Garrett Stock, aye. Hugh. Hugh Morton, aye. John. John Bell, aye. Phil. Phil Weinberg, aye. Betty Slade, aye. That's unanimous. Thank Wonderful. you very much, Alan. You are very welcome. Thank you very much for your time this evening. I look forward to continuing the conversation in January. And in the interim, uh, we will get that. So we have valuation done, as was mentioned okay. when, when we made the pro. It didn't include CR value, but we can get that. That's Good. not a problem. Not a problem at That's all. That's required. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> it should be. Okay. That's right. Yeah, no, understood. And hopefully okay. we'll be able to have have something to, to let you know about um, about uh, a deal in place with uh, with the former the, the former prospective buyer. Thank you all very much for your time this evening. Have a good evening. Betty's frozen. Can you hear me on the phone though? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm talking on the phone and <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, um, does anybody have any comments on item eight, decisions on projects to be considered? Any questions to, of how it works or just, are you just gonna come and watch? <laughs> I think basically we'll replay today in a sense from the public. Okay. So the next is expense accounts and FY24 funds. Um, I received those late this afternoon and I do, we do have enough funding for sure to be able to do these projects. We don't have a, an issue on that. At the January hearing, I'll give you the details mm -hmm. because I haven't been able to work them out. Does anybody have any question? Okay, and the 10th is discussion on ways to protect historic town buildings that have received CPA grants. Uh, I told you earlier what I'd found, uh, basically that town buildings don't have any preservation restrictions on them, um, but some towns have required that there be a statement in a grant agreement that the historical commission of the town would have to approve any changes on the physical or the exterior of any town building. And that would be hopefully in any contract to sell. That will lower its value <laughs> in some ways to the purchaser if he wants to tear it down. He won't be able to if the historical commission does its job are there any questions about that or any other ideas 
Could you think about it? No, I, I better use John Bell. I like that idea. Did we put it out on? Did did anybody put, look at listserv to see if what the, if uh, any other towns out there if they have anything? Yes, I've I, been to listserv. I've been to the Community Preservation Coalition. I was very surprised. Yeah, yeah, me too. Really surprised. That's kind of surprised me, but that that could work though. Putting that in there though. Yeah. Putting that language in. Yeah. All right. Um, no correspondence except the letter I told you about, and I think I sent it to you. That was the planning planner, the town planner supporting the Snell project. Um, Maria, I don't have the two bills that paid. Do you have them? There were two bills. Um, I, the list. Okay, hold on. You you sent it around, I think. Well, I I had the list in the previous packet, and I think I left it at the town hall. Now that I think about it. So, does anyone have the previous? I forget. I think one one? was. Uh, I can't remember to be honest. Yeah. One was Home Depot. Um. And that, but I'll do it next time. Okay. Yeah. We'll put okay, the bills sorry. on the next. Okay. All right. Um, is there were only two. There were only two. One was Home Depot, and I forget <laughs> what, the, what the other one was. Well, we'll we'll worry about it in January. So, are there any other issues or things that, that wouldn't have come up in the last forty? Did come up in the last forty-eight mm -hmm. hours? I don't have anything. The next meeting is January 12th at 6.30, and we will put a legal notice in the newspaper tomorrow. We'll send it in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. I thought <laughs> someone else might make it, but I'll do it. Oh, that Tim's <laughs> Does everybody agree? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Good night. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy everybody. Thank you Good very night. much. Good night.